Good evening, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Alabama Rhino Beer Review. We have a John Labatt's glass here. Sorry, a John Molson. Wow, I can't believe I said that. You know why I said that? Because I'm looking at a Labatt Sterling and a Labatt 50 glass right off to the side of me that I'm going to be using in some reviews soon. And yeah. Anyway, we've got the glass. We're going to put a beer in it. What we're going to put in it is from Toronto. It was picked up for me by Greg. Thank you very much, Greg. This is Lost Crafts Revival, which is a premium lagered ale at 4.8% alcohol by volume. It's a brewery that if you go to their website, they have a lot of merch, and a lot of merch at a very uh, expensive price. I saw some stuff going at 40 to $60 just uh, for normal stuff, um, but they know their thing. Excuse me. They're... Uh, they branded, and they branded well. You can't fault them on that. If people are willing to pay the money for the stuff, you can't fault them on it. I, I mean, I can mention it and talk about it, but I can't fault them on it. Lost Craft Beer. Lost Craft Inc., Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Ingredients, filtered water, malted barley, hops, and specialty yeast. On the back here, Revival, Revival is a premium, all-natural lagered ale. Small batch brewed in Toronto, inspired by a specialty beer style from Cologne, Germany. Think global, drink global, uh, local. And they have Instagram, they have Facebook, they have Twitter. Uh, I know they follow me and I follow them on uh, Instagram. Let's hope uh, they still do after this review. Now there are a lot of contract brewers that do really well and a lot that don't. Uh, any contract beer is already going to be more money than a regular beer because you are trying to make up your margins and you're fishing away a lot of your margins to the brewery that's brewing for you and fermenting for you and possibly uh, possibly packaging for you if you don't take it away somewhere else to package it. Um, All that being said, that's the reason why I sometimes get weirded out by uh, by uh, contract brewers making stuff just like loggers and Kolsch's and Pilsner's and all that, because it just it kind of it kind of weirds me out in that I wonder why you're making something that's going to cost more, that's already all over the market when you don't have uh, you have to rely on the beer store, the LCBO, and taps. You have to rely on taps to get your product out. You don't have an actual tap room or tasting room for people to come in and learn your product, learn your learn your people, learn your story. Your your whole story has to be told on licensees, not from yourself. So it, it, it's why things like this get weird to me, where I would expect things like, I don't know, some weird imperial double chocolate coffee Rattler or something, right? That, that's the most disgusting thing ever, but that's the type of stuff I would think of. Uh, for a lot of contract brewers because it needs to be something that makes people want to find you. Um, yeah, look, a little bit of haze, nice golden color, there was a lot of bright white head, it faded pretty quickly, smell. It smells like a pilsner, I mean kind of straw like, um, a little bit of dirtiness. Uh, a little tiny bit of uh, of a zestiness on the back end, um, so it smell it smells the the style of a Kolsch. It does smell it. It smells proper. Um, yeah. So where where I was going with that is uh, a lot of these craft breweries, and I mean some of them do really well and some of them don't. And then I wonder what the what the actual uh, turning point is. Is it that you make beers that are just too intriguing? that you can't sell them fast enough, or is it that you make them in too small of a batch? Uh, is the reason why some things like Ace Hill Pilsner and Lost Craft Revival Kolsch able to do so well is because they, and Spearhead, when Spearhead was doing really well, is it that they brew at places that have a very large uh, brewing capacity and you get a very large batch and then you can do that once and sell that for a while instead of having to brew a bunch of different times? I mean... I would love to get some craft, uh, some contract brewers on to BDU one time to talk about craft brewing. Cheers, guys. Okay.
So, Lost Craft Revival Kolsch. Stylistically, pretty spot on. Except it's more more mass appeal than a normal Kolsch would be. I mean, Kolsch is a mass appeal type of beer, but the, I, I taste less hops in this than I, I assume I should have. A uh, little bit of straw forefront. A little bit of sweetness on the forefront. A little tiny bit of dirtiness on the back end. A little tiny bit of cut grass on the back end. Then this uh, bready, bready and wheaty, uh, just uh, bready and cereal grainy finish. Just a dry, bready, cereal grainy finish. Makes it very, very, very drinkable. And remember, I don't drink my beer cold. So, and I have to bring this up a lot when I do beers like this because people are like, how can you taste all that? Or, it should taste more like this. Or, mm -hmm. I like my beer uh, basement temperature. I sit the beer on the cement floor on the other side of this door and I leave it there until I'm ready to review it. I usually keep it in the fridge until I'm close to reviewing it. Like when I know I'm within a... When I know I'm within a day or two of reviewing it, I'll take it out of the fridge, put it on the cement floor, and then I'll grab it when I'm ready for it. And, uh, yeah. That's the way I do my stuff. That's the way I always have. That's the way I always will. And, uh, there's no faults in this at all, even at that temperature. Light to medium bodied. I'm very micro-bubbled. Very easy to put down. I could see this being a very good food pairing beer. I could see this beer being a very good beer in a restaurant. So here's what where I'll here's what I'll say. For Lost Craft, if the choice was for me to buy this and take it home and drink it at home, I'd probably turn it down for something like Outlaws Lagerdale or Bo's uh Bose Lug Tread, which is in a bigger bottle for not much more money than this. Now, if I'm at a restaurant, and this is on tap, uh, and it's, I don't know, five, five or six bucks for the pint, I would very easily buy that as a food pairing beer, because this beer would really do really well just neutralizing flavors on your tongue and making you ready to go into the next part of your food. It would also do very well with uh, with like seared meats and spicy food and all that because it is a cleansing drink. Uh, now, if this was cans at a restaurant, um, it's a three dollar can at the beer store. Sorry, at the LCBO, so it would probably be I'm going to guess a six to seven dollar can at most restaurants. I could do that. I could do that, mattering with the price of uh, their other beers are. If their other beers were in the same range, like say a pint of Canadian, which I wouldn't normally drink, but if I'm I want a beer and a pint of Canadian is like five fifty and this is six, I'd go with this. If a pint of Canadian was four fifty and this was six, I'd probably go with the pint of Canadian. Um, very good beer for food pairing, uh, stylistically very well made. Uh, is it a beer I love? No, it's probably it's probably my third or fourth favorite Kolsch in Ontario. I mean. Like I said, uh, I would probably go with Out Outlaw and Bose uh, Lug Tread are my first, my first and second, and uh, yeah, I, I I I'm thinking of the other ones, but I don't think any of the other ones actually compare to this one. In all honesty, the other Kolsch's I've had from Ontario, I, I think they are either too hoppy or uh, or have a few off flavors or this or that. So actually, yeah, this would probably be my third favorite Kolsch in Ontario as of right now boring style for me, style I don't really care about, but in all honesty, it's probably my third favorite Kolsch. Um, out of ten, stylistically a little more hops than it would be a ten out of ten, so stylistically I'd give it a nine. Uh, personally, I'll give it a seven five, so what's that, that's a... Uh, 16 and so an 825 overall. Thank you, Greg, for picking it up. Lost Craft Revival.